and I wish for you that it will because it means trophies. Well, if yeah. Mourinho ever does, you will finally buy into the fucking Mourinho mentality because it is something legit and it makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, even though it's not the most entertaining football in the world. Of course, I wish that every winning team was like AC Milan back in the day, that they play beautiful football, they have beautiful players, they just overrun their opposition all the time. But sometimes it's about like, you're playing... I know, like it's I'm, about getting the job done, right? It's, it's about getting, getting the job, job done, done and getting the three points. And like I said... Every Which Tottenham is fan what... is going to go home very happy after that. So fair play. And to be honest, even the second half, we dominated possession. We dominated whatever, but we did fuck all. So we didn't deserve anything from it. If you know what I mean? So still, Mourinho completely controlled the narrative, controlled the game. And we never, never looked in danger of losing the game. So that is still a strength of, you know, your defense. That is still like um, to be praised. I just don't. I don't know, it's just sour grapes. Maybe it's just sour grapes. But anyway, the Premier League this weekend, Manchester Derby and the Midlands Derby, definitely worth watching. I cannot wait for the Manchester Derby. I think knowing Solskjaer, he's going to pull something out of the fire, eh? Because he's just had a massive loss. He's had a massive loss. And this is when his team pull him out of the fire. So I'm going to say United could get some at this time. The Manchester United Derby is at 6.30 p.m., Central European time on Saturday. While in the Serie A, I mean, it, it, we've gotten to a point in the Serie A where every fixture looks interesting because it's so open. The picture is so open. There are, I mean, AC Milan are leading, but right now Inter Milan don't have the Champions League to worry about anymore. It all feels very close. A few games that you might want to keep an eye on. Lazio Verona on Saturday night. Don't forget about Verona. I've been saying it. They're a good team to watch. They've got a very good goalkeeper and a very good defense. Can Lazio bring their Champions League form to the Serie A? We shall see that on Sunday. We've got lunchtime fixtures, 12.30 p.m. Central European time. Cagliari Inter. Hmm. I don't know how this one will go. Cagliari have not been looking so impressive, but Inter have managed to shit the band on quite a few occasions. So we shall see where that goes. Atalanta Fiorentina. Fiorentina are desperately looking for a win. And we know that Atalanta have not been performing that well in the Serie A. And then Bologna Roma. I'm just going to say them all. Napoli Sampdoria. <laughs> Genoa Juventus. Genoa are desperate. This is not a good matchup for them at this specific moment. And then AC Milan against Parma on Sunday night. Parma are not looking that great, but right now the pressure is on AC Milan to keep the lead five points above Inter Milan, who now are, you can bet, as we thoroughly said so far, they are going to be focusing on this competition. And I guess that's it with our Euro review. Beautiful. Just one more time for good luck. I think Inter Milan have got a shot. You're an idiot. All right. Okay, we can go home now. <laughs> yeah, now we can go home. Actually, we can go to the oh, answer. Of we can the go to the quiz. quiz. Yes. Uh, no time to go home yet. I haven't had a lot of time to think about it, but um, we shall see how I do. My expectations are not that high this time, honestly. And here we are. We're getting to the end of the show. It's emotional. But before we let you leave and return to your homes, we have to go through the answers to the quiz. So, Tommy, I really loved it before you go back to your homes. Before you go back to your home, but back to reality, let's say. Exactly, exactly. And leave us behind. Tommy, do you need me to remind you of the four events? So I'll, I'll try and repeat them in random order. Arsenal beat Parma 1-0 in the Cup Winners' Cup. First Italian manager to work in the Premier League. First Italian player to play in the Premier League. And Ince leaves Inter Milan. Correct. Good. So, yeah. Ince at Inter Milan is a player uh, that I've never seen. I don't recall playing. I know that he played for Inter Milan. I know he's had two seasons, maybe, uh, for the Nerazzurri, or three, something like that. And I'm just guessing. I'm just going to wing this one. When we set up our website, I actually put a picture of Ince on our website that we're not using anymore. And I did some research on him that very day. I want to say that he left Inter Milan in 1994. I'm just going to stick with it. And I'm just going to wing it if I, I have no clue about the first 
Italian manager in the Premier League, nor the first English player in the Premier Italian player in the Premier League. Okay, well, I will do. I will give you the names of the people, okay? Thanks, Rory. Yeah, I think I'll give you a clue, right? The first Go. English, the first Italian player to play in England was for Nottingham Forest, and his name was, um, it was Andrea Silenzi. Now, I don't Andrea. know if that helps you or anybody no. else. <laughs> Maybe he, Andrea Silenzi, not me. He moved from Torino to Nottingham Forest, and he then became the first Italian to play in the Premier League. And the first manager, he had a very short management career, but it was Gianluca Vialli. Wow, ah, Gianluca Vialli. Well, he was the first manager. Then I might have it wrong. Maybe the Premier League did start earlier than the end of the 1990s. Maybe. All right, Rory did tell me this before. I admit, I admit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't was... ever try and like, you know, lie to the police. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, yeah. no, I'm not lying to our listeners. Rory right. did tell me. God damn it. It's a sacred bond we have yeah, with the listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm, um, all right, I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, first player, first Italian player in the Premier League, followed by Ins leaves Inter Milan, followed by first Italian manager in the Premier League, followed by Arsenal beat Parma in the UEFA Winners' Cup. I got it all wrong. Oh, I got one wrong? I think I might have made it too hard. So, first was Arsenal beating Parma 1-0 in the Cup Winners' Cup in 1994. Fuck. Then, second is the first Italian plays in the Premier League in 1995. Damn. Third, Paul Ince leaves Inter in 1998. That late? And then finally, the first Italian to manage in England, Gianluca Vialli, in 2000. Holy crap, I got zero points from that. Sorry, Tommy, I, I don't know. Well, actually, no, I'm not sorry. Good. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. It's, it's, <laughs> and man, I, I honestly love quizzes where you get to learn something. I'm definitely going to backtrack the history of like Parma and Ince at Inter Milan, 1998. That sounds so late. But it does make me worry for the fact that you now have to choose between Arsenal or Palmer to pick the team, or you can pick players from either team. I think I can, I've just looked through the lineups, and there are definitely players you know, so you'll be fine. If you want, I can guess Inter's lineup last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I have no clue about these two teams, honestly. It's so early. But I will try, I will try with Arsenal. Let's try with Arsenal. Okay, let's try and do the Arsenal team. So, it's, it's a fairly, I think... Uh, yeah, okay, there's, there's some names that you should know. Let's see, we'll, we'll go. What year was it again, 1994? 1994. Holy crap, this sucks. I, man, I would I, honestly say go for Parma. I would honestly say go for Parma. Should I go for Parma? Yeah, I think that's... Are there a lot of English players in Arsenal? Mate, the whole lineup, apart from one, is English. No, never going to guess that. Let's move yeah. to Parma. Parma, 1994. I might embarrass myself. I remember the 1999 team, but that's five years later when they won the UEFA Cup. Um, man, I don't know. I really might embarrass myself. I don't know who I'm going to mention. God. Um, eight of the 11 are Italian. Eight of the 11 are Italian. So, right, let me think of the, let me think of the World Cup team that we had in 1994. Was there anybody from Parma? Mm, I don't know, man. I don't really know. Was... Was it Billy Carbone in Parma at the time? Carbone? No. Man, I have no idea. I'm going squ- to... Guys, I give up. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't want to say... I don't want to say heavy, heavy bullshit. Like, not to you listeners. So, I let Rory read the lineups. Uh, I feel like I'm going to give some clues. Come on. No, just just read the lineups. No? Oh, okay, I don't no, want to embarrass it. myself. So. I, I, so, yeah. I've officially scored the zero points... In the time Although now, up. I feel like I've definitely set myself up for a very difficult week this oh, week. Oh, don't what? you worry about it. <laughs> don't you worry about it. It's going to be, when did Inter win their first Italian title? Mm, when did Torino win their first Italian title? <laughs> that was, I was tempted to go for that theme this week. But anyway, right. No, this, in, no but the questions were very good. I liked it. I liked in goal, it. we have Luca Bucci. No. Antonio Benarivo. So you don't Alberto, even know the lineup and you're reading it. <laughs> Alberto Di Chiara. Lorenzo Minotti, who is captain, Luigi Apolloni, 
Now, the first name I recognize, Roberto Sensini. Okay, yeah. Thomas Brolin, who yeah. was the Swedish guy who was great at Palmer, then overweight when he came to Leeds. Um, Gabriele Pin, Massimo Krippa, Gianfranco Zola, and Faustino Aspria. Oh, man, Zola yeah, and Aspria, they would... are the... They are the only two that I honestly could have got. Who would go on to have a very colourful career slash life. If you haven't researched Fastino Spria's um, life after football, please do. There's a video of him riding a horse dressed as a T-Rex, which is definitely worth checking out. Um, and the Arsenal team, for anyone who might have a slight interest, David Seaman, Lee Dixon, Nigel Winterburn, Paul Davis, Steve Bold, Tony Adams... Kevin Campbell, Steve Morrow, Alan Smith, Paul Merson, and Ian Selly. Now, I think I would have been pushed to guess that Arsenal team, so maybe I did make it a bit too difficult. But that's the game. Next week, I'll take my licks and see how hard you make it for me. Yeah, no, the one thing that I want to say about Parma, so at first, when you were thinking, when I was thinking, actually, two things. At first, I was thinking, before you told me during the break, that <laughs> the Premier League actually started in the early... Don't let them see behind the curtain, mate. It's you okay, can't let them see behind okay. the curtain. We want... We want I, man, if it was possible, <laughs> honestly, all these guests that we have, I would love to have them here at my house. I love doing the <laughs> podcast, but like, it's starting to get boring to do it with a screen in between us. But besides that, no, two things I want to say. Before I thought... Uh, before I realized, before you told me that the Premier League started <laughs> in the early 2000s, I would have said... That early, 90s. Probably, <laughs> early 90s. Early 90s, sorry. <laughs> I would have thought that Zola was one of the first Italian players to play there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I got that wrong. And then the other thing I was thinking, did you know that 1999 Parma team that ended up lifting the UEFA Cup was cursed for the rest of their careers? Oh, is it like the Benfica curse? No, I didn't know that. Go on. None of the players who played in that Parma team have ever lifted the Champions League. A few names, Gianluigi Buffon, Buffon Lilian Cannavaro. Turam, Veron, Cannavaro? Cannavaro, exactly. Veron, Cannavaro. Turam? No. Turam has never won the Champions League. Oof. Yep, Turam has never Crazy. won. Crespo has never won the Champions League. Well... Wasn't he in the final where AC Milan were winning 3 0? Oh, yeah, they he lost might have had, that final. He might have had one hand on it at some point. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's incredible. Look, look at the lineup. That's crazy. Look at the lineup. Their manager was Alberto Malesani, who then became a living meme because somebody right. told, them, so told them, somebody said that at the end of the season, you are going to, you said Mollo, which means okay. I'm going to quit. Right. But mollo, actually, molle <laughs> is in, in Italian. It's also an adjective that means soft. And he <laughs> thought that the journalist was calling him soft. And man, he goes on with people like the people next to him trying to tell I him. I think you showed me this video on YouTube. So yeah, funny. Yeah, it's so yeah. funny. And then he had another rant when he was coaching Panathinaikos in Greece. And as an interpreter, because I'm an English teacher, but I'm also an interpreter, you see this woman who is the interpreter from Italian to Greek sitting next to him and the guy his his speech in Italian is impossible to translate it's just a swear words blasphemies <laughs> and you see this woman just like taking notes taking notes and at a point she lifts her head she looks around and she's like I, I cannot Go, I'm not saying that you are. yeah she's like she keeps saying that football has become a jungle <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he was the manager of that team and all the great players in the Parma team have never lifted a Champions League trophy. There we go. Parma are always a team I like looking back on. That yeah. that team. Oh my god. Yeah. With that, with that Parmalat symbol, like That's a slogan it. on it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Well, Tommy, I think like I've made it too hard. Hopefully, some people at home got it right. Yeah, I, I was trying right Fingers now. Fingers crossed. To, I was just trying to redeem myself with some football knowledge because I, I do know things, guys. I know things, honestly. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, you have a football podcast, but I'm not a total idiot. But guys, we've gotten to the end of the episode. Um, I've had a lot of fun recording this one. The holidays are coming up and we're thinking of a Christmas special. So stay tuned. Let's get our Christmas on. Thank you for Uncle Sharma coming on at our Shams on Twitter. Big up yourself, and thank you for Bryce coming on, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week, guys. You have a great weekend of football, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.